Curtis is such a loser. He will never have new merch. He will always have He'll old never merch. have the new merch. Yeah, I bet you must feel pretty stupid right now. Got brand new, very really good podcast merch. Wow. And the best thing is, you don't even need to listen to my podcast to enjoy the merch, because it's that cool. And it's all available right now at curtisconnor.com. And yeah, it does help support me a lot. So thank you. <laughs> enjoy the video. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, what's up? How's it going? And if you're coming back, what's up? How's it going? It's really good to see you again. I hope you're doing well. You see what happens when you subscribe to my channel? You get an extra greeting at the beginning of every single one of my videos, except for that one time. So press the subscribe button for an extra greeting. All right, folks. Movie time. I love making videos about movies, uh, even though watching them over and over again is absolutely taking years off of my life. But sometimes it can be tough to find the right movie to talk about, you know? So I went to my Twitter, at Curtis Connor, and I asked you guys to uh, send me some movies you want me to talk about. Uh, and you guys did not disappoint. I feel like I have enough movies to last me a lifetime now. I even have enough lifetime movies to last me a lifetime now, because that was a, a majority of the submissions. There were a lot of good submissions, but one really stood out to me, and that was this little movie called Goat Story. It's a movie that was made in the Czech Republic uh, and it's been dubbed uh, in English. And the whole movie is on YouTube for free, so that's how you know it's a certified cinematic slapper. So the full title of the movie on YouTube is Goat Story, Old Prague Legends, full animation movie, English kid cartoon, free children movie. Really rolls off the tongue, I know. And let me tell you this, Goat Story ruined my life. Like I have never furrowed my eyebrows so much during a movie before. Like my eyebrows have like muscles now. That's how like, that's how much I was going like that during the whole movie. These are no longer eyebrows, dude. These are, these are biceps. <laughs> like everything about this movie is wild, but it has the most insane ending to any movie I have ever seen. I'm using a lot of hyperbole right now, I know, but trust me, okay? At the end of the movie, your jaw's gonna drop. All right, let's read the description on YouTube. Goat story, cartoon, scary, creepy and ghostly but also funny. CGI Czech animated movie about legends from old Prague with English dub. The most successful Czech animated movie ever. Successful Czech movie check. The film budget was 1.8 million and it grossed 1.3 million. I know you can't compare Goat Story to like a Pixar movie that releases their films like worldwide and they have huge budgets and marketing and stuff. It's just very funny that, you know, you could lose like half a million dollars and still be like, <laughs> I made the most successful Czech animated movie ever. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. How much how much money did you make? Uh, we made $500,000. Wow, $500,000. Go away. <laughs> oh. We made it go bye-bye. Money go bye-bye. Let's read the official synopsis of the movie, then, then we'll get into it, okay? The film features a comedic story about the friendship between the village boy, Jemmy, and his goat in medieval Prague. In Prague, Jemmy falls in love with Katie, a worldly girl. The goat begins to envy this relationship. Uh, their story intertwines with that of the poor student Matthew and his contract with the devil. So, you know. Tale as old as time, right? Alright, let's stop fucking talking about it. Let's watch Goat Story! <laughs> so the movie starts off with the main characters, Jemmy and his talking goat, who is aptly named... Goat. They're walking down this dirt road, cause they're going to Prague, baby. They're going to Prague to start a new life. Or something. I, I actually don't know why they're going to Prague. They never, they never say it, but it's their... I guess it's their prerogative. Okay, sorry. But the whole movie like takes place in Prague and this is our introduction to the city of Prague. Hear ye, hear ye to all in Prague. Clockmaster Hamish is building a giant clock. Go away. So already terrifying, just attempted murder is what we just watched. And this unsettling child on a unicycle is a recurring character in this movie. But it's very weird because uh, the animators chose to not give this boy any pants, and, uh, they don't blur anything at all. So there's, like, several scenes in this movie where you see just, like, everything. And I think that's a little odd. I feel like it would have been easier to just throw a pair of pants on the kid, other than animating a wiener frame by frame? Uh -huh. Hey, what do I know? Maybe that's how life was back in Prague, you know? It was just fucking dick set. <laughs> it just dicks out for Prague. Oh, but then yeah. we cut to Jemmy and Goat walking through the downtown, and Jemmy is super excited to be in Prague. This place is just beautiful, Goat. But Goat, she ain't having it. Mm. 
It's just like a village, except bigger. It's a no-go for Goat. It's a no-goat. So to convince Goat that Prague is cool and the place that they should be, Jemmy suggests that they should go check out the Charles Bridge. Let's go see the Charles Bridge. So they get to the Charles Bridge and it's currently being built. And you know, it's a totally regular construction site, you know? <laughs> They're swinging a limp horse around and shaking it until horse eggs fall out. They got a big human-sized hamster wheel. Nothing out of the ordinary here. Every construction site has those things. So this is where we find out that Jemmy loves wood carving. He's very talented at it, and that's all he wants to do in life. He just wants to carve wood. How many you woods could, could a Jemmy carve wood, wood if a Jemmy carve could... could but while he's admiring the statues, he gets interrupted by the big bad bridge boss. So you and the horse with the horns want to work, huh? Mm. Want to get to work, huh? <laughs> well, let's get going. He was he was just standing there. I don't I don't think he wanted to work, right? Is that what life was like back then? It was dicks out, and as soon as you just walk by anybody who's working, they're just like, oh, so you want to work, huh? No, I'm just walking home. Oh, oh man, you want to be employed by me so bad it's crazy, <laughs> and you work for me now. What? No, I don't. That's messed up, man. You can't do that. Oh, build a bridge and get over it. Emph emphasis on the build a bridge. Build a bridge. Come to my store. Build a bridge. I sell stuffed bridges. <gasps> build a bridge workshop. Get over it. So Jemmy agrees to work on the bridge for some reason. Then we cut to one of the other main characters named Matthew. He's this poor student who goes to Prague to learn from a man named Master Hainish, who was hired by the mayor of Prague to build a giant clock. And that's what Baby No Pants was screaming about at the beginning of the film. Here he is, here he is. And in this movie, there are just so many things that happen that I think are supposed to just be like one-off gags to make people laugh, but they're just so unsettling to look at. In this little church scene alone, there's a pastor with this cube nose covered in boils. This man is eating an entire turkey. Just just a whole turkey. And the little pantsless boy is just pissing. Dick out, pissing in a church. What? 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 And you'll notice this going forward, but every scene has at least one thing that just is so uncomfortable. I don't know if it's the animation style or the sound design, but this movie makes me so uncomfortable. Oh my God. But anyways, the townsfolk, they leave the church and everybody bullies Matthew for being poor. What a loser. Get absolutely owned, dude. So then he goes to the local pub to get some beer. And just like the church scene, uh, this part is very unsettling. <laughs> this is the life of a thing. Alright, look at this. <laughs> what the fuck? So, okay, let's do a recap. Let's do a roll call. So you got the devil. Oh, you, hey, you know the devil? Hey, you know that guy, the devil? Yeah, he's there. He's just chilling, playing cards. And oh yeah, a guy motorboating some boobies. And it's weird, if you look, if you scroll down just a little bit, right, yep, it says children movie. <laughs> Weird. I don't remember any motorboats in any of the kids' movies that I watched growing up. Well, other than like Free Willy, because, you know, boats. <laughs> this movie was actually rated PG-13 in the US for sensuality and nudity, but thankfully this bar scene is as bad as it gets. Oh, wait. <laughs> it gets so much worse. Okay, so Matthew gets kicked out of the bar for being poor, get dunked on. So he ends up squatting in this old abandoned house that's apparently haunted or something. For that is the house of Dr. Faust! Oh! I don't know who that is. I don't know why they heat that guy yelled that, but and they never explain it. Oh! But anyways, the next day, Jemmy is, you know, he's milking goat like you do with your friends, right? We all do that with our buddies. I'm always milking my bros, dude. You know, gi giving the homies the old gulping down a fresh cup of bro milk? Yes, please. So Jimmy's at work again, he's staring at the statues, and yet again, the big bad boss ruins everything. Huh? 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 Will you quit standing around, Whoa. donkey? Jesus, man. <laughs> hey, relax. Buddy just chugs a bucket of goat juice and then fucking slaps her away for standing around. <laughs> hey man, she's a goat. That's all goats do. <laughs> Can you imagine this guy at like a zoo? Now, if you look behind me, you can see a nice family of elephants. They're so cute and so kind, so gentle, you know, so intelligent. And hey, it's... stop standing around. Whoa, whoa, sir, lower your voice. What's the problem? All day with these animals just standing around, huh? <laughs> but sir, and they're you, animals. Sir. And, and you as well. You're always just standing around, okay? Get to work. 
Sir, this is my job. I am currently working right now. Yeah, but you're just standing around. And frankly, it's pathetic. I'm not though, I'm sitting, sir. You're, you're the one who's standing. Standing up for what I believe in. <laughs> you son of a bitch. And to think, here I was, thinking I was all high and mighty. Hey, stop uh. standing around. So Jimmy is hammering nails into the bridge now. And uh, I just gotta say, <laughs> he's nailing it. <laughs> but uh-oh, they ran out of nails. Give me another nail, go. He screwed. But luckily, a random lady drops a nail into Jemmy's hand. Hmm? Oh. <laughs> Would you like another nail, sir? <laughs> <clears throat> ah, Groat. <laughs> you see what's going on? Correct me if I'm in the wrong here, but if this is a kid's movie, maybe we just dial back the cleavage, like, like a little bit? Just because this animation is 3D doesn't mean every girl has to have triple D size bazoingas, you know? Dude, that's so weird. That's like if Elastigirl from The Incredibles had just a huge dump truck of an ass, and that wouldn't happen. <laughs> they wouldn't do that. Like, I know breasts are a natural part of the human body, and then they shouldn't even be sexualized, but this still feels a little off, right? Mostly because this movie was written and directed by a dude. Like, this character reminds me of, like, the, like, fighting games, like Soul Calibur or Street Fighter. Like, like the girls throw one punch and their boobs move, or, like, go up and down for, like, ten minutes after. And also, why is she just giving strangers nails? Huh? That's weird. Would you like... Another nail? You're handing out nails to people? You're insane, okay? You're unhinged. Use some of those nails to put your hinges back on, because you're unhinged, okay? Would you like another nail? No. How about a fingernail? Don't worry. It's not mine. <laughs> what? You see? See? Okay, so boob nails aside, Goat is like jealous of Katie? Yeah, her name's Katie, so what? So that implies that Goat has like a crush on Jemmy? Dude, that's like if in Shrek, the donkey ended up like fucking the dragon. <laughs> oh wait, all animated movies are insane. So right after that, uh, Jemmy is just smitten. You know, he's simping for Katie. Katie. So much so that he causes the Charles Bridge to collapse because he was carving a statue of Katie into one of the wooden beams with his foot. And that's the first time I've said that in my life, hopefully the last. So obviously everybody is super pissed, so they chase Jemmy and Goat into town. There's this big crazy chase scene, and they end up hiding at the local pub. And outside there's a quick shot of Matthew staring at the other students in the pub. And this is pretty important to his character arc because he just wants to fit in with the other rich students, okay? That's all he wants. He just wants to be friends with these people. And the only way to be accepted by these rich students is to have money. Even though they've been nothing but mean to Matthew his whole time in Prague, he still wants to be their friend for some reason. Oh, ah, good one, buddy. <laughs> Ow. Oh, okay. Ow. Hate you. That's so hey, that was a good one, buddy. That was a really good one. Ow. Oh. Whoa. 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 <laughs> hey buddy, good hit. <laughs> I'll see you later. Fuck you. Okay, so the night carries on in the bar. Jemmy and Goat get super drunk together. They play a classic game of stir the soup. Oh, now we get a free penalty kick. <laughs> Whatever the hell that is. <laughs> and then we get another uncomfortable scene. Will you marry me? That just wouldn't work out at all. Mm. No, not at all. It's because I'm a goat, isn't it? Well, maybe a little bit. I don't know. <laughs> okay, so suspicions are no more. The goat is in love with Jemmy. And I feel like Jemmy wasn't as opposed as he should be, right? It's because I'm a goat, isn't it? I don't know. <laughs> Look, it's not because you're a goat. Seriously, that's actually cool with me. It's just the fact that you don't have any nails in your boobs. If I undo your blouse, I better see a fucking Home Depot in there, dude. Okay, now we cut back to Matthew in that old abandoned house, and he finds a secret room with one single silver coin in it. Tempting, but he doesn't take the coin. Yet. I know all this might sound like silly and pointless, but please bear with me. This story is just so fucking insane, and I'm, I'm just making sure I get all the beats right so it makes sense to you guys. So the next day, Master Hanish is like, damn, my clock needs statues if it's gonna work, but none of these sculptors are any good. 
We need statues. But then, big surprise, he sees Jemmy sculpting on the side of the road, and he hires him to be a sculptor for the big clock. Meanwhile, Matthew is at the bar with the students, and they're doing the typical kids movie stuff, you know, like motorboating boobies and chugging beer, and then they all bully him for having no money again. Once a loser, always a loser, even if he eats caviar. <laughs> and when he leaves, he makes a big mistake. He leaves the plans for the big clock at the bar. So naturally, the mean rich students, they scribble all over them and sabotage Matthew. And at this point, Matthew's had it. So he goes to that secret room and he grabs that silver coin. So he goes back to the bar and buys all the other students some beer. More and... beer for the young men, yes? On me. But even after that, they're still just super mean to Matthew. My yeah. friend. Fishy, fishy, fish. I can eat stinky. <laughs> What? Fishy, fishy, fish. Making it stinky. <laughs> I really hope that term catches on. <laughs> Anytime you're trying to like ruin something intentionally, you're making it stinky. Holy shit, that's so funny. Oh man, you made it stinky. Okay, also they're like blocking Matthew so he doesn't like see what the other students are doing, but they're being so loud while they're doing it. Fishy, fishy, fish. Making it stinky. <laughs> Hey, thanks again for the beer, man. That was that was like that was really nice of you. Making it hey, it's, it's no problem. It's, it's just me being a friend. This is stinky. I'm making it Good so friend. stinky over here. Such a nice oh. guy. <laughs> All this stuff smells like shit now. <laughs> hey, man, what's that guy doing? Like that guy behind you? What's what's he doing? Fishy, over there? fishy, fish. What this guy over here? Oh, he's not doing hey, anything. Get he's stinky. Thanks. Uh, thanks for the beer, man. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Is he farting? Sorry, I can't get past this. What is he doing? I don't know. Hey! Hey, those are my plans! You're scribbling all over my plans! What the hell? Jesus! Jesus! Thank you! Uh, <laughs> Sorry, fellas. Whoa. <laughs> My best buddy just hit me with a baseball bat pretty far. <laughs> but hey, that's why they call it a hole and run. Or a hole and run. Uh, a home run. Fuck. Ugh. <sighs> hey man, are you okay? Yeah, can you take me to the hospital? Alright, next morning, there's one more day for Hanish to finish this clock. The clock shall be ready! So, Matthew delivers the final plans to Hanish, but he has no idea that they're all stinky. P.U. Now the mayor shows up to like inspect the clock and see how they're doing like progress wise, I guess. And while they're there, you know, they spy on a naked lady. Uh, classic kids movie stuff. Uh. <coughs> then they discover the clock plans that were made all stinky. <gasps> Putrid plans those are. Whomever is responsible shall be punished. So they punish Matthew. You, you're a murderer. And this scene is like genuinely terrifying. I'm not joking. I like felt sick while watching this. I mean, one would even call it scary, creepy, and ghostly. <gasps> but also fun. Oh, fish in the mouth. Oh, fish in the mouth. Oh, fish in the mouth. Oh, we got a fish in the mouth. What did I do? So they let Matthew go and he he's pissed off. And you know what? Rightfully so. <laughs> you know, he's had an awful time. Everybody's mean to him. They're throwing a fish in his mouth. Fishy, fishy, fish, making it stinky. Oh, fish in the mouth. So he does what we all do when we're feeling pissed off. We want revenge. We sign a contract with the devil. I'll show you. I mean, they don't really go over the details of the contract, but let's see what happens. <laughs> Damn, he's fresh as fuck, dude. Look at that fit and that haircut, dude. Is that what happens when you sign a deal with the devil? You just get devilishly handsome? If so, the devil, if you're watching this, sign me up. But I don't know, he may look cool now, but I don't think this is gonna end well for Matthew. That's, that's my prognosis. Prognosis. Back to the movie. We're getting close to the end. Trust me. So meanwhile, Jemmy and Katie are hanging out. Really Things are getting pretty steamy, even though they shouldn't be because, you know, free children movie. Hey, I'm getting ready for bed right by the window. <laughs> right by the... Ah. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> Goat, come on. Why did you get so drunk? Huh? Now go to sleep. Uh. 
Okay, we could talk shit on this movie all day long, but this is hands down the sickest way to transition between scenes, dude. A bearded skeleton woefully playing the organ. Yeah, that's tight as fuck. He doesn't even have any organs. And he's playing the organ. Whoa. All right, everyone, it's the moment you've all been waiting for. It's clock time. Yay! Clock time. time for a clock. So it's the big day, they unveil the clock. It's awesome and everybody loves it. And this next scene is truly something else and I'm so I'm just gonna play it in full, okay? What was that? <laughs> oh, it's nothing, it's nothing. Ooh. Jimmy. <laughs> nothing come on what are you doing <gasps> oh dear be right back sorry mm. just full-on two characters getting it on while a goat watches them and then followed by just full-on nudity i mean i know things are probably different like all around the world wow fucking most profound thing i've ever said yo know, things are probably different every everywhere <laughs> i don't know maybe i just i've never seen how like media is uh in different countries i guess all i'm saying is like my mom would fucking freak out if i was a kid and she walked in and saw that i'd be grounded dude i'd be grounded to this day i'd still be grounded if my sweet mother walked in on me little curtis watching two characters cuck a goat yeah that's not gonna go over well okay we're getting to the end of the movie i promise we're almost there i know i keep saying that but trust me we're, this is we're close to the end and this is where it really starts to get insane so everyone's super impressed by the clock okay especially this group of offensively portrayed chinese people good evening uh they want to hire hanish to build a clock like that for them so we want the clock a tool so swagged out matthew he is eavesdropping on this whole conversation and he runs to tell the mayor that hanish might build a clock for someone else. And the mayor does not like that. This is an insult to everyone in this city. Only he can have big clock. So he does what any old regular person would do. He sends his henchmen to cut Hanish's eyes out. Yep, a main plot point in this free children movie is an innocent old man gets his eyes cut out of his skull so he won't build another clock. And I feel like there's less gnarly ways to ensure that he doesn't build another clock, right? Could have put him in a jail cell. Honestly, you could have just asked him politely. He seems like a chill guy. But the mayor said, fuck it. Let's cut his eyes out. Children movie style. I guess that's what mayors do. So, okay. If anyone, if anyone in Kurdistan tries to build a clock somewhere else, I'm cutting your eyes out. Okay, so Hanish is dying now for some reason. I guess he has no eyes. So he dies. And Hanish's dying wish is to see the clock one more time. Must see the clock. So Katie walks him to the clock where he pulls out one gear to mess up the clock forever. And I gotta say, that's hard as fuck. His dying wish was to just piss everybody off by ruining the clock. Dude, his la the last thing he wanted to do in life was make it stinky. <laughs> and for that, Hanish, I salute you. R.I.P. R.I.P. Because your eyes are dead. Obviously, an angry mob storms the clock, and they're like, we need to punish whoever's responsible. And when they see Katie, the only alive person inside of the clock, and they're just like, you did this. You do you're the one who messed the clock up. And at this point, I honestly thought she was going to fix it really quick with some boob nails, but that didn't happen. Oh, boob nails. <laughs> you imagine, imagine if boobs had nails, like fingernails, like boob nails. That'd be kind of cool or weird. Let's keep going. So they actually hold Katie hostage and they tell Jemmy that the only way that they'll let her go is if he fixes the clock. You will fix the clock. No. Even though he doesn't know anything about clocks, he's just the sculptor. But they say if he doesn't yeah, fix the clock time. before the hourglass Thank runs you. out, they're gonna hang Katie. Punishments are pretty harsh in Prague. I'll, I will give them that. And Jemmy was actually super close to fixing the clock, but Goat eats all the plans. Goat! Huh. But that doesn't really make sense because I thought all the plans were ruined before, <laughs> right? Like if there was another set of plans that were just totally okay and legible. Well, at least I have the plans. Why did they throw a fish in Matthew's mouth, right? Throw a fish in the mouth. Whoa. <laughs> Should fix that, that's a big plot hole. So the next 20 minutes of the movie is Jemmy trying to fix the clock. There's a quick scene where Matthew runs away from the devil and that's pretty much the last time we see him. And then there's this one quick scene that I feel like we need to address. Hang on, Katie, I'm coming. 
Why the guard's butt out? <laughs> hey, goat story. Why the guard's butt out? Why guard butt out? Also, can I watch a movie about those two guards having a secret gay relationship instead? That sounds way more interesting than whatever the fuck I've been watching for the past hour. All right, so let's get down to the wire. And by wire, I mean, why are we still watching this movie? <laughs> and they start preparing Katie to be hanged. Ha hung? Hanged? Hanged. And just when all hope is lost, Jemmy fixes the clock. It worked! The fucking guy did it. The mad lad ab absolutely pulled through. The clock works! But something's wrong. When he runs out of the clock tower, everybody's gone. Everybody's already at the hanging. And unfortunately, Katie is hung. She's got a huge dick. No, she's hanged. She's hanged by her neck and she dies. Yeah, I know. I'm not I'm not kidding. I'm being serious. But believe it or not, it fucking gets crazier. Katie! The next day, Jimmy is praying for God to bring Katie back to him when this happens. <gasps> Katie? Katie? <sighs> Katie! Katie's alive! I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, hey, if Katie's alive, who did they hang? Uh, let's find out. She did it for me and for you, Katie. I'm so very sorry, Jemmy. Holy shit. <laughs> Let me remind you, if I haven't made this clear yet, this movie is on YouTube for free for any kid to watch. That's traumatizing, dude. Imagine if Ratatouille ended with Remy just getting caught in a mousetrap and fucking breaking his neck. That's a nightmare, dude. That'll ruin a kid's life. Like, why would go... I don't... <sighs> Believe it or not, there is... There's more to the movie. Let's finish this fucking thing. <coughs> Goat. <coughs> What are you two still doing hanging around, huh? <laughs> okay, so Goat's alive now. I guess she had a metal thing in her, a metal tube in her throat. Is that supposed to stop a hanging? Honestly, honestly, they all, they all deserve to die. I hate this fucking movie, man. But anyways, they ride up to the sunset together. Credits roll, end of movie. Holy shit. So what did we learn, huh? Being greedy is bad? Sure. I, I guess that's a lesson. Never underestimate anybody, because even if they don't like you at first, they'll ultimately sacrifice their life so you get to live. Maybe. Boobs big? Yeah. Oh yeah! <sighs> Hold on, no, no. I guess the real lesson that this movie wants to teach is you should always keep an eye on your belongings. Because if you don't, someone might make it stinky. All right, guys, I gotta cool down for a second. How about we hear a quick word from today's sponsor, ExpressVPN. Hey, I'm on the couch again, the brand deal couch. You're here because you want to hear about ExpressVPN. Okay, I get it, all right. Look, whether you're a goat or a human, internet privacy is super important, okay? That's why I use ExpressVPN on all my devices every single day. A little hacker fact, did you know that a hacker connected to the same unencrypted Wi-Fi network can steal your personal information? It's easier than you think, it's scary. With only basic computer knowledge, the hacker could gain access to your passwords, financial details, or even your emails. But ExpressVPN encrypts your internet connection using the highest standards of encryption currently available. It would take a hacker with a supercomputer like billions of years to crack. So good luck, hackers. Kiwi likes ExpressVPN too. He wanted to say that. Can you say it into the mic? I love ExpressVPN. Wow. ExpressVPN also allows you to change your location to make websites think you're somewhere else. This allows you to access content that's blocked in your country or region. For example, I wanted to watch a few episodes of South Park, but since I'm in Canada, I couldn't access it on Netflix. But all it took was a few clicks, and there I was, 
laughing at a show that I like. Oh what, you're still not convinced? <laughs> ExpressVPN has the fastest speeds because they only invest in premium servers, making them consistently faster than any other VPN provider. They have 24-7 customer support. It's super easy to use. You can connect with just one click. And it's the top rated VPN provider, rated number one by CNET, The Verge, Wired, Tech Radar, and many more. The list goes on. And the lovely folks over at ExpressVPN have hooked up the citizens of Kurdistan with a great deal. So if you want to find out how you can get three months free, just click the link in my description or go to expressvpn.com slash Kurdistan. I really hope you guys check them out. I seriously use ExpressVPN every single day. But yeah, thank you so much to ExpressVPN for sponsoring this video and so many of my others in the past. I appreciate it. Hope you guys check them out. Uh, yeah, back to me. All right, that does it for the video. Thank you so much for watching it. If you enjoyed it, please press the like button because one like actually equals one game of Stir the Soup that I will play with each and every one of you. If any of my viewers are from the Czech Republic, uh, please let me know if you've seen this movie before, what people think of it over there. Like, is it super popular over there? I don't know. Is it the Shrek of Czech? I don't know. Also, they made a sequel to this movie. It's called Goat Story with Cheese. So if you like this one and you want to see me do the sequel, let me know in the comments. Uh, press the subscribe button because I make videos and they're good. <laughs> I guess. You can check the description for my podcast called Very Really Good. It's a good time. We just put out new Very Really Good merch. It's awesome. And I love it a lot. You know, Twitter, Instagram, all that stuff is down there in the description. But yeah, that's it. I'd stick around, but I have to go. Sorry, I literally just signed a contract with the devil. So now I'm cool as fuck. Bye.